Chinese barbecue where I was born is going viral and it's a sign of a lack of consumer spending. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Chinese Insider, I'm David Zhang. Now, I'm not sick, spring is here, so is the pollens, and so uh, just allergies today. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you enjoyed our content so far and comment below what your thoughts are on today's topic. So today we'll talk about something quite interesting and it's related to food, Chinese barbecue. And not only that, it's actually where I was born in China. Now, what is Chinese barbecue? And why is it going viral? Well, American barbecue we know pretty well. Mediterranean kebabs are pretty tasty and familiar. And maybe even Korean barbecue is quite common. Chinese barbecue is a bit different. The common way is you sit in these wooden stools around a tiny table with a metal charcoal box in the middle and it has wire racks on top. And the chef will cook 30 to 40 skewers with tiny meat slices on it and season it generously with cumin and some type of spice and they bring it over, it's about 80% cooked and then these skewers basically get rested on the rack and you cook the rest yourself. Now usually you can find spicy and non-spicy meat, vegetable of all kinds like beef, lamb, chicken and each skewer sometimes costs around 1 RMB which is about 15 cents US dollars so you do the math 40 skewers would just be like $6 so it's quite cheap and most often you can also get things like seafood uh, like barbecue squids or other animal parts like chicken gizzards. Now my favorite are the meat tendons. When I was younger, the barbecue stalls didn't have as many fancy ways to eat it. You basically ate the skewer. Now where I was born, a city called Zibo in the province of Shandong is taking this barbecue experience to a whole new level. Now this is where I'm from. It's the home of Confucius and the historical location of many dynasties. Now the local government there has turned Chinese barbecue into a government funded tourist destination. And the new way to eat it is to sit by the charcoal box, take a skewer, wrap the meat with a flatbread, pull the skewer out, and then add some sauce and green onions. So kind of like a taco. And this new viral food tour looks delicious. They even opened up a high-speed rail direct line to the city so that people can come and take an afternoon to eat barbecue. What makes this Zibo barbecue special is a combination of consumer-friendly prices, quality and quantity, and it's a new way to eat it. So for a mere price of seven to ten dollars, you can actually feed a whole family. And in fact, the local art and tourism minister will even stand personally at the train station and greet everybody that comes in for the tour. And they even prepared local specialty gifts for the tourists, every single one of them when they arrive via the high-speed trains. So the barbecue tourism is born. But here's the problem. Spending seven to ten dollars for a food tour isn't a good thing. Why did I say that? Well, if we take a look at what this means, it basically says that the level of consumer spending has reached a new low point. The price point in which people are accepting to spend money has dropped. To the point where people can't really afford high-end meals as a going out event, rather they're choosing these value options, uh, quantity over quality in terms of the street barbecues. The data backs up this too. Chinese households added a staggering 9.9 trillion yuan in bank deposits the first quarter alone of this year. And that's more than half of 17.8 trillion yuan for the whole of 2022. That means in one quarter, the savings in Chinese households is already more than half of the entire last year. No one is spending money as much as the central government hoped. In fact, Chinese government uses money printing as a way to stimulate spending. Yet consumers are just taking the cash and putting it away. Because again, the fear is real in China. Uncertainty driven by the CCP policies will take a very long time to adjust. In other words, people are spending less money, and when they do, they're choosing to spend more on affordable meal options instead of a lavish three-course meal. Now, this inevitably leads to a problem of deflation. Since 2021, most governments, central banks, like the Fed, began to increase rates, leading to high inflations in Europe and America. China managed to control the rate of inflation at less than 1% year over year. And that, the problem is moving to the other direction. Too much money printed, not enough spending, Prices may be dropping, but it could lead to a long-term economic problem. Now, we're seeing a societal trend in China, much like the long-term deflation Japan experiences. China is starting to see the same. Frankly, we don't know if deflation in China will persist for a long time, but right now, real estates and export are both down. Aside from food, pretty much everything is getting cheaper. And that's a decrease in demand and a decrease in spending. Also, young grads don't really have good jobs. They don't have enough to spend, and people basically started to live a survivable state in China. And they no longer seek an upward societal growth in life. Such state often called laying flat in China. 
This is what could lead to deflation for the near future for the Chinese economy. Now, is this barbecue tourism what Xi Jinping wants when he calls to stimulate the economy? Well, it's unlikely. However, the upside is that the local economy and tourism in that particular city, the city where I was born, is booming. According to internet data, this new viral tour includes a daily incoming tourist traffic of about 50,000 people. The train station re receives more people than the Chinese New Year, which was considered the busiest time of the year. And in some stalls, 500 tables are turned every single day. And it's even more popular than a Chinese hot pot chain restaurant called Heidi Lao. For anyone looking for a week trip, this is what a package could cost. So using Beijing, for example, the cost to travel to Zibo City for the barbecue costs about 200 RMB for the train one way for, uh, for one person. So that's about 30 US dollars. And for the upcoming May holidays, the hotels have already been booked quite full. Now data says compared to 2019, the hotel booking rate exploded by 800%. So a family of three for a weekend trip, say, to Zibo will cost somewhere around 2,000 to 3,000 RMB, which is considered quite cheap. But here's the problem. Majority of the current traffic to the city of barbecue tourism are actually within the province of Shandong. So they're not from Beijing, or at least not a lot of people, meaning that this has not stimulated cross-province travel as much. This is a dramatic reduction in spending ability. Remember eating barbecue like the Chinese tacos, right? The simple analogy is this. If New York City Mayor Eric Adams wanted to boost tourism in the city and he set up a special Amtrak tour option from Ohio to New York City and offered them street tacos, and he had basically gave each tourist an I love New York t-shirt, and that's what's happening in the barbecue tourism. Of course, they would rather each tourist go to Peter Luger and get a steak for four, but that's basically what's happening now. Chinese tourists are only viewing taco stalls as the spending target and not a steakhouse. Of course, tacos are delicious. In fact, shout out to the ladies making the best tacos, in my view, uh, near the 7th subway station in Queens, 111th Street, if you want to check it out. Just go downstairs of the subway station, and they're right there. And they're, they have really, I think, the best tacos carnitas I've ever had. All right, back to the topic here. So the growth and going viral of the Zibo barbecue first started out as an, actually an organic thing. And like I said, it's very common in China to eat barbecue, especially in the summertime. You go and eat it with your family and uh, it's cheap, right? It's delicious and it calls for a good time. What happened was that during the zero COVID lockdown, college students in the province were actually sent to the city for quarantine. As a sort of a farewell treatment, uh, they were offered Chinese barbecue as a meal and the students found it quite delicious. So they said, well, after zero COVID ends, they'll come back and eat it again. And this basically went on to become viral on Chinese TikTok, which is Douyin. And then the local government saw it as a tourism opportunity and snatched it quickly. And they branded the barbecue tourism like some cultural heritage. As a tourist minister, like I said, he would personally stand there and he actually greeted the tourists. And then, you know, these last few days, the Chinese central government took notice of the, the, the trend. And then all the major state media began to promote this new viral thing, prompting to a smoke and fire, uh, this, what they're calling is a smoke fire vibe, which basically is another way of saying a revitalizing down-to-earth feel of the Chinese society is back. Or, you know, things are moving again. A combination of viral things, trending, celebrities, state media pushing it all, the food itself, well, we basically have a new trend. The question is though, will this rescue the overall spending problem that the government faces? The uncertainty is actually the number one problem. And there were some signs in March this year pointing to a rebound in consumer spending largely in movies, eating out, and traveling. But again, that's not the whole scenario. Uh, we don't see an overall increase in terms of the confidence, especially when it comes to things like export and real estate in, uh, getting back. And so I think that there's some, still a long way to go before things really return to normal. Combined with the two other factors that we, we basically mentioned earlier, there's too many people who are saving up instead of spending money and the government was, uh, was printing too much money to stimulate, and that kind of failed. Now, according to official data, just last month, China's Consumer Price Index, CPI, rose by just 0.7% in March, and uh, that's down from about 1% growth in February. The Producer Price Index, which measures the sellers, fell by about 2.5% last month, and then that's down about a fall of 1.4% from the months prior. So less producing, less export, less spending, basically more deflation worries. And it's no wonder that the state media started to jump on this barbecue bandwagon. It means that there could be some other viral food thing next, and the next. Basically, what's gonna generate the little bit of virality to boost a little bit of that spending, that's where they're gonna go for. 
The problem of that lack of spending will still persist if there isn't a complete systemic change across the central government, which again, I think is very unlikely. Because one of the key aspects of this barbecue gone viral is that it is considered a light industry. In fact, it doesn't generate much revenue on a broader scale like export or technology would. And it's not to seek to actually solve the real problem, which we've been talking about, then that's basically the Chinese Communist Party. So not in any way reduce the entirety of the fiscal problems that we view and see. So really the way I see it, it's a, 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 an attempt to play on the temporary hype in Chinese social space, perhaps can temporarily anesthetize the nerve and calm the problem before everybody's eyes, but the long term or the root of the problem is still there. What about this fire and smoke vibe though that they keep talking about? Well, this is quite interesting. Uh, the idea that now this down to earth revival of society is here, it's basically saying that China's coming back after three years of zero COVID. Now, I think this is a real case of them ignoring the social desolation in China. And that's caused by the economic problems, but also things like the actual policies and the pain caused by the CCP. The fire and smoke vibe is almost destined to be emphasized now and continued on for a while, because it's the same as the official tone of promoting positive energy, the feel good stories, because it's always filled with a certain sense of nationalism. The campaign to promote fire and smoke, its visual effect is quite impressive, providing the illusion of a vibrant society through these pictures that we see. But instead of this desolate society for both young and old, they're trying to paint a picture that people are better and they're feeling better. In reality, it's an attempt to make people feel drunk, right? Intoxicated to stop recognizing the problems and just instead focus on the smoke and mirror. It's taking on something sensitive, it deserves attention and requires actions, and then downplaying it in a subtle way. This rhetorical resonance, I call it, coming straight from the CCP in Beijing, which has actually been recited from the first top person down to the very bottom of the bottom, and it has altered the perspective of people, using words like fire and smoke to cover up what a bigger problem there is in both the economy and in policies. All right, that's it today for the episode of China Insiders where we analyze why there's a viral trend of Chinese barbecue going on in the city I was born in. And uh, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and comment below what your thoughts are. All right, this is China Insider. I'm David Zhang. We'll see you next time.